Welcome to the EKG Guy. If this is your first time, I'm glad you're joining us and welcome back if you're returning. We've been going through our EKG coding reference guide and now we're at the point where we're looking at low QRS voltage. So in this lecture, we're going to look at low QRS voltage in both the limb and precordial leads, okay, and what actually makes up that criteria. So if you don't have access to our coding reference guide, which we've now made available online, all you would do is put this link into your search bar enter your email address, click submit. From there, you'll get an email with a link that you'll then have access to. So you'll come here, you'll have access, and we're slowly going to be adding a lot more features to this uh, that are coming soon with more videos and examples. So what you have is we went through part one where we looked at the general features, atrial abnormalities uh, with the P wave abnormalities. So you can look at that and go through our lectures if you haven't gone through that. The rhythms we looked at in part two, where we looked at sinus, atrial, junctional, and ventricular rhythms. We look at conduction blocks, uh, AV conduction blocks in part three. And now we're here in part four where we're looking at this voltage uh, and we'll look at axis and hypertrophy in this uh, section as well, okay? So um, now if you want access to more of our courses and our books and resources, you can go to www.ekg.md and then from there, you can look at our course that we have available. Um, and those, there are separate videos, you know, we have over about 350 or so on YouTube, but there's a few hundred that are actually separate from the ones we have available that are separate for that course, okay? So that's a very in-depth course that takes you from a beginner to advanced uh, level. So check that out if you're interested. So let's get started. So low QRS voltage, that's what we wanna to discuss today. So what is it? Well, simply first off, you have to know what the QRS complex is, okay? So the QRS complex. So just to review, this is our P wave, this is the QRS complex, and this is a T wave. This is a normal cardiac cycle, okay? Now there's no Q wave there. Remember the Q wave is the first negative deflection of a QRS complex that precedes an R wave. So if you look here, if we were to draw a complex, here's our P wave. This now would be a Q wave, this is an R wave, and this is an S wave, okay? Notice there wasn't one here. But either way, in both cases, we generally consider the complex that represents ventricular depolarization as the QRS complex, okay? So that's why you may, may hear them denoted as uh, each, all right? So let's look at what we mean here. So because of low QRS voltage, remember voltage is up and down, okay? So if you imagine you have your QRS complex We're looking at the height or the amplitude of it from top to bottom, okay? And there's different criteria of what makes this, and it's different in both the limb leads and then the precordial leads. Remember that the limb leads are here on the left side on the standard 12 lead. Some have them arranged differently, but the limb leads are one, two, three, AVR, AVL, and AVF. So these are the limb leads. And then here on the right side on our standard EKG, we have the precordial leads. And the precordial leads are leads V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6, okay? And now the voltage criteria for these are different in each one. So in general, to meet it in the limb leads, it should be less than five millimeters. And then to meet it in the precordial leads, it should be less than 10 millimeters. Okay, so 10 in the precordial leads, five in the limb leads. And what you have to have is that that voltage, again, that amplitude from top to bottom, if you're looking at the limb leads, should be less than five millimeters in all of them. And then in the precordial leads, less than 10 millimeters in all of them. And if you recall, if you look at one of these boxes, so look here, in this section, one of these boxes, say we take this one, the height of that represents five millimeters, five small boxes, okay? So if you can imagine over in the limb leads, notice that from top to bottom, none of these complexes reach 
at least five millimeters in there. We're talking about these ones here, okay? The QRS complexes. Notice none of them reach five millimeters in any of the leads, okay? They're all less than that. So we've met it in the limb leads, okay? In the precordial leads, it's 10 millimeters. So in the precordial leads, if we now look at, so this is be the limb, and the precordial leads would be two of these, 10 millimeters, okay? So from top to bottom, and notice that this certainly doesn't meet it, okay? Very small, only a few millimeters. Even this one doesn't meet it because it'd be from here's 10 millimeters. Same thing here, okay? And this one as well. And even this one, the biggest one, does not reach 10 millimeters, okay? So we've met it also in the precordial leads. So this is the criteria you wanna look for. Low QRS voltage met in both the limb and precordial leads. So if you want to meet it in the limb leads, you want less than five millimeters in all of those limb leads. And in the precordial leads, less than 10 millimeters in all those leads. And if you meet that, that's what the low QRS voltage is, okay? So what causes this? Well, there's many causes. Uh, some include uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease because if you have so much air, you, those leads are not really able to pick up much of the electrical signal from the heart. Patients that are obese can have it. Those with mixed edema, if there's a precardial or pleural effusion that's affecting, so that fluid between the heart, okay, the impulses that come from it and the ability to record it may be impaired. If someone has restrictive or infiltrative cardiomyopathies, that can also cause it. All right, so most commonly, we tend to see this with lung conditions, such as COPD, obesity as well, and as well as in these uh, effusions, okay? Pericardial effusion as well, we can certainly see that, okay? When you have uh, so much fluid in that uh, pericardial sac that you can't even pick up some of those signals. So hopefully that makes sense. So low QRS voltage in the limb leads, again, less than five millimeters in all those leads, and the precordial leads less than 10 millimeters in all those leads. All right. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available. So again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md. Okay. So this is our website. And what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100, more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos, and this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter, okay? So completely separate from what you're getting online for free, okay? These are um, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book, okay? And then you also have the pocket guide available. So you can choose which format. They are the same thing, both these uh, book and the pocket guide, uh, different formats. Uh, I really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go. Now with the book, you also get videos. So notice these are the videos, okay? And these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there, okay? We'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic. And it's used now among many institutions. So use, uh, check that out. Now, what it also includes are calipers. So yes, you get calipers with this course, okay? Um, I don't know anyone else that offers that, but you do get calipers. I think they're very helpful and they can, uh, you know, if you know how to use them correctly, uh, can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on, okay? And then you also get our pocket EKG reference, okay? This was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows. Uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, 
laid out there. Very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who is the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic, in editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the EKG course. You'll see examples of lectures, okay, why we developed this, okay. A lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and, you know, still struggling. So uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay. You can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay. And you find yourself using other resources, which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself um, 25% off that will even, it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right. Have a great day.